Hadouken! They know you're UK, man. Still. I know. I saw I did that. Anyway, <laughs> this is it, ladies and gentlemen, in the arena. Can we make some noise for this grand final? Uma going up against Chris Wong. Their hearts are probably racing. This is a bone breaking, blood pumping matchup. It is going to be insane. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the rules, Uma is in winner's side. All he needs to do is win three games and he is crowned your Street Fighter VI Capcom Cup next champion. Chris Wong, continuous task. He's got to win three games to reset the bracket to put him and Uma in the same position. And he's got to win an extra three. Uma can use the first set to download, collect the necessary information. Hopefully his RAM and his processing speed are good enough in that mental computer of his. You could say the same for Chris Wong. I feel like in the longer set with a Luke, the more dangerous he becomes. So let's see it. Here we go. Grand Finals time. Uma versus Chris Wong, game one. Already had an accidental overhead there, and the fireball did stop the dry rush in his checks here. So I want to see what Chris Wong adaptation he's going to learn on the fly because he had no real time to think about this. He's had to make that loser's run. Going up against difficult opponents. It's the anti air there, does Uma. A very, very deep uppercut to catch the anti air. And speaking of, catching another normal crouch medium punch. Getting more than enough damage towards the end with the flash knuckle sequence spine buster. That's one. Gets the drive rush into the throw for the positional advantage there. Almost try to get the perfect parry on the slow moving fireball there. Oof, no cancel. I think even Uma, uh, Uma jumped out of his seat. And that's going to be the round there. Take it away. Doesn't even need to spend any super because a perfect light flash knuckle will take that first round here in the grand final. Again, with this run back, you can expect Chris Wong to come in with a different approach. Oh, but that was a huge error. That had to be a little overlap to try to get the uppercut. Give him the benefit of the doubt. He definitely didn't want that for sure, but he will make amends. That's what Chris Wong is excellent at doing when he blunders in any sort of execution error. And then there's a forward throw there, gets the punish counter and the meter gain. Drive reversal. He think he's trying to activate something there, but it didn't quite work out. Uma. And this is going to be huge. Feng Shui engine. What's the defensive choice? Going to be like for Chris Wong. He's sitting down. He's keeping it steady. Oh, the jumble. That was huge. What a pickup from Uma off the anti-air. On the same side still. Great block from Chris Wong. But life is winding down. And so is the Feng Shui. This is what he wanted to target in. And gets the throw. That was not a punish, though. And block on the overhead, he's trying to get a perfect parry instead. Can he burn him out? The combo should do it. No! He didn't want to burn him out. He's saving it because he wants to take the game. Oh, damn, that stare, stare down. down. That respectable, wild stare down there from the two. Staggers the light, gets the grab. No perfect shot! Perfect parry! Ain't no way you're trying to do that at the last second. Uma, completely ready for it. In fact, that's what he did towards the last end of the first set in winners' finals against Chris Dude, the fact that he's ready and calm to do that at this late stage in the tournament, props to him, man. So oh, many people would have capitulated man. in that scenario. Ooh, and there's a DI. A very rare drop from Chris Wong. This is going to be everything for Uma. He might get the burnout. He does he secure does. it. This is why I think Feng Shui is pretty decent. He gets the fuzzy jump medium punch. And he has here as well. He's got to deal with this. He's going to harass him to hell. There we go to the stand medium punch. There's a forward throw. Throws it out just in case he's going to check with something else, but it didn't quite work out. There's a delay, and here comes Pale Rider. It's going to re fully refresh that drive meter there for Chris Wong. A little bit of a difference in his critical art territory. Chris Wong, what are you going to do on offense? You have your gauge back now. Block on the overhead, low on drive gauge. He's trying to run away, so he has at least two bars to work with for something, Uma. One drive rush cancel from either of them will do the trick. You see the patience oh. from both ends. That was a little, little scary, and a little bit of a stutter step to Chris Wong. Immaculate, immaculate pacing to get the stutter against Uma. And that was off of a crouching light kick. Well, this is the big thing, especially at this late stage and high level of the game. Your drive rush cancels from light are such a turnaround. They are such a pivotal thing to use because it can go into heavies because of the extra frame advantage you can work with. And that's what's been saving Chris Wong time and time again. There's a drive impact there, and he's going to go for the jump conversion instead. This is a pretty decent damaging conversion there from Uma. Oh, that was slightly delayed. You can see the counter hit as well. Uma, it's a dash up again, enforcing the point with those lights, or excuse me, with the pressure instead. Forward throw, punish counter. Upper, no, well, okay. he still got it. That was actually so slick for Uma to go for the crouching heavy punch anti-air. Nothing too committal with Tencent Rin, right? Because Chris Wong had the option to go for the air flash knuckle. 
Just run it down there, throws out an OD fireball in the neutral. Chris Wong still trying to do it, and it, that looked like Crouch Fierce drive rush cancel. I think that was the button I saw. There's a delay, blocking it out here is Uma trying to get out of the corner here. There's a neutral jump. He's got to be careful as well. Still holding it down, trying to find a drive rush cancel in some way, and luckily the stalk stopped that. But Chris Wong capitalizing the whole scramble. Very deep, and that's it, jump with the hammer. The same time, so W. Ah, uh, respect. Guess. And oh, the counter what? DI for the round. That's going to be brilliant, and we've got to give props because the prior sequence, he actually allowed Uma to get a regular jump, but he thought he was going to do something else like the shot was doing earlier today, and he was able to block it out and get punished before he had to do that counter DI interaction. Very high end risk from above. Let's see if Uma ever goes to that tactic again. In the meantime, let's take a look at Chris Wong and the way he's. Controlling the Ooh, what in the world you Dude, react that, to the flash knuckle? Oh, that was beautiful. That was actually beautiful. That launch, it was beautiful. For awesome sure. was that? Perfect parry. Puts him in the corner, could burn him out. And that's why he's trying to avoid getting burnt out. You're gonna have to make a choice, do it on your own volition. Oh no, never mind. Chris Wong's gonna do it for you. He's gonna confiscate your drive gauge with the eraser. He's gonna get a nice little Oki situation here. Back to what a read defensively. It's gonna be the Feng Shui engine. Let's see what Uma can make out of this. The corner carry. Safe so significant as well. Oh, they no, hit, no. yeah. That was hot air. He didn't have anything. He, he didn't have, have any sword. sword. Zero Hodges in the tank. And also zero life left. Chris Wong with a dominating 2-0 thus far. Well, I wouldn't say dominating. That was actually a player to be galvanized into doing something they don't want to do. And Chris Wong. His mental fortitude right now is amazing to see. Let's see if Uma can turn this around. Stan Fierce into the drive rush cancel. We'll get that flash knuckle conversion across the screen. Ooh. Tries to bait something there. I love the high level players doing drive rush cancel into specials, even if it helps level up something there. What a snipe out too with the heavy. Chris Wong immediately seeing green, immediately passing out into red for Uma. A lot of damage coming in. Yeah, he's going to be patient about this as well. He was looking forward to that fireball. He was trying to escape, but that roundhouse chased down after the Ooh. driver. Sneaking in the drive impact as well. 10 cent rim. What are you going to do about it? Back dash there, and he didn't do okay. the jazz, but he gets a second chance, and that missed. The heavy release missed, and that's going to be blocked. That's going to be parry. Even more so. Uma with the retaliation on the board. First round of game three. Oh, Damn. I like that. He immediately stopped the momentum to stop the driver's check on the crouch and medium punch there from Luke Uma. And again, dashes into danger. And again, trying to go for the anti. Uh, they haven't been working against Chris Wong. I noticed against Chris Wong, they haven't been working and he tried to make amends, but it didn't work out. And Chris Wong is going to build an abundance of super meter here, but he's going to do a safe jump instead and deal with this the honest way. Oh, wow. I was going to ask, does Chris Wong force the critical arc out of Uma with the drive impact. No, instead, still manages to clip him. I was talking about in the corner, right? You have a character in burnout. You have such a significant life lead, and there's a critical arc stock. I was wondering if Chris Wong would have gone to that decision. But either way, that's all said and done with. Into the next round, Uma. So sitting at three bars, Chris Wong at two. Great defensive sequence there from Chris Wong to regain the drive gauge lead here, and he's just waiting for anything. Some movement to react to. Or take again. Almost got the drive rush light punch there. Didn't quite work out. I see Men RD do that a fair bit. He was talking about that earlier in the hotel. Got him. But even more so, excellent reactions against the drive rush medium punch coming in from Uma. That's not what he wanted. I'm not sure if that could have been punished by a light attack. Again, anyway. he went to the wall either way. Chris Wong making sure it hurts the next time oh around. Dear. He's going to make it hurt. He's getting a bit scrambly and he's going to get punished and he's going to be burnt out here. Or so his drive gauge will be suspended. Are the nerves playing a factor against Uma? Let's see if he's going to use a super to get out of there. Chris Wong's going to do death by a thousand cuts. He will threaten that stun. It is a low hanging fruit. Wait, that's there. it. The spine buster. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to a reset. Chris Wong resetting it in emphatic fashion. Three to zero against Uma. What are you going to do now? That's the question here. Taking a sip of the water, staying hydrated. Stay hydrated, gamers at home. That is super important here. I think even because it was 3-2 in the winner's final, that could have gone either way. I think after that point, he said, okay, I know what I must do if 
I get my potential run back, which that has come to fruition here. Dominating fashion in this first half in the grand final. So this is our final three games here at Capcom Cup 10. Somebody is earning a million dollars after this first of three. I am so glad we are commentators because I would not want to do this. I felt under pressure the moment I walked through the door, Jammer. That's why I'm not a player. So, <laughs> let's see. The beginning of the end. All tied up again. Losers bracket for both here in the grand finals. Uma now brought down to Chris Wong's level. See if he fires on those cylinders right now, and he goes for staggered pressure here. Loses a lot of drive gauge in the process. Or something, Oof. and a hard read there with the jump. He wasn't doing that in the first game, and that was a read on the Sand Blaster for sure. And I saw a backdash there from Chris Wong that gets punished. And he's going for all the OD moves there. It's Uma. Oh, look at this. Got to bait something. A huge difference in aggression. Chris Wong not ready for it just yet on defense. And this is going to be great. You know, Uma, he can take this damage. But what happens after this situation with the advantage on knockdown? Excellent defensive choices and the punish counter. You know what? Either way, if it was a fireball or not, even in normal, Chris Wong didn't have enough life to retaliate with a TI of his own. Well, Chris Wong reeled back in his seat because I think even he was surprised at that choice that Uma made. But he's got to switch things up. And boy, has he done it and delivered in spades in that first round. Crouching medium punch there. He's looking for the conversion there. It's Chris Wong, but Uma's making him block, so he has to change his mind. Suppress it in win. Oh, the uppercut. No slam dunk there as well. Walks forward there, and then walks under. No punish counter, but he got something to work with. The punish counter is there. Another, actually, he's going to back away. No big conversions. Thankfully, for Uma's sake, it's a walk out of the corner. Well, big damage. You get all the real estate to work with, so I think it's the safest and most conservative choice. And here comes the Feng Shui engine again, and he lets it rock. The delayed hit. Oh, oh, that was the counter hit. Okay. Was that delayed from the side of Uma, or was Chris Wong just really adamant about pressing the button? Let's go for a safe jump there, either with the jump medium kick. Frozen the fireball to cover the entry. Still not throw tech in there as Chris Wong. He's not panicked yet. When he starts throw tech, he'll panic. He's holding it down here. Uma can't take an action just yet. Chris Wong knew that. That's why he's trying to make sure he does as much drag gate damage as possible to keep him in the amber. But all systems go with the green. Just weighing it out here. I think for either player, any single hit confirmed can lead to destruction, and Chris Wong is threatening that with that exact crouch medium punch within the space. He's threatening the ranges. Still resilient on defense, exuding that patience there. And wow. there's a trade that was fine. We can take that. But Chris Wong might try to bait him into doing a button and catch him with the second crouch medium. Let's find out. With less than 10 on the clock, we're going to see some really antsy movement. Back row. I think Uma still got the lead. And now he doesn't. Yeah, he parried with two seconds on the clock. That was a very interesting decision. I'm surprised about that. Got Chris Wong the round. Good pressure there. Almost in burnout in 90 seconds here is Chris Wong. I know he's got two bars, but he's got to be very careful. He's got to make sure some sort of attack connects. Ooh. No anti -air. I totally understand that because how Uma had delayed his dive kicks. I totally respect that decision from Chris Wong. And even more so, the buttons from Uma on the way out. On, wake up. Now we got the low forward. It's time for the feng shui. Let's play indeed. Here comes the safe jump. Oh, no, he goes for an empty jump instead. The, drop, the, the super gauge is actually depleting rapidly here. Gets the overhead into a store, and he didn't believe in it, but... It wasn't the jungle version of the Fuha store. Man, he's gotten so much damage after like, what, two and a half sequences? Still not going for the rising up of the anti air there, and he's just gonna hold it down here, Uma. One. He's gotta be very careful. Ooh, that could have been with punish from Chris Wong. Still blocking it out here. Lovely defense here. Doesn't get the perfect parry, but yes, I'd send him away as well. I do not want to deal with the Chris Wong with low vitality. And he gets through it! Wow, what a smooth criminal! This man reacted to the sand blast with a drive rush. And even more so, OD Tenten Rin for the invincibility. What a play from downtown. He's lucky as well because the combination of having a good hitbox on the uppercut and it's a forward moving move. Forward moving. And of course, having the hurtbox on the Sand Blaster. It worked out for Uma there. One nil in this grand final reset. I thought we were actually going to see four games from the bounce from Chris Wong. No lie. And roundhouse there, safe on block. Away again, hits him with the forward fist. He might have to utilize that a little bit more in the neutral to kind of get Chris Wong to think about different buttons to use. He's readjusting his spacing because of that button until he runs into danger there. It will be the flash knuckle conversion. Again, the anti no option worked. for Uma. It really hasn't. It really hasn't worked. For any of the juries against Chris Wong specifically. All right, that's going to be the rounds. Does he need his level one? There's the Vulcan Blast. 
and puts one round on the board in this game two of the grand final reset here does Chris Wong Damn, the mental stamina these guys have is ridiculous. I was just about to comment on that. Chris Wong still firing on all cylinders with the offensive sequence. Now you get the corner pressure. What's it gonna be? Uma tried to maybe walk out. You did see the low get checked from Chris Wong with the full conversion. No, sir. No hammers here. All tension. Denied. And here comes the Feng Shui again. Doesn't want it to drive reversal because it'd be a low Ooh. drive gauge. And he swatted him away like a newspaper to a mosquito. Straight to the corner here. Lovely safe jump there from Uma. Right reversal, keep him there. This is good. Forward throw. Even got the backdash towards the end of it, actually. Challenges immediately after a frame advantage button there with this damn medium punch. Look at the spacing. Yeah. Right under the timer, right? That's the sweet spot for a lot of the players to check the defensive maneuvers from the person in the corner. But oh, the jump. Oh, he no. Puts himself in there now. Man, the bravery after that. Walk up scan oh, jab. What? Oh, a tick throw. Dude, that connected. Temp it did connect. Crazy late there with the active frames that are stand like it. One hit from Chris Wong should do the trick. But Uma gets the hit first and he takes what? the round. And that was actually rather sneaky, right? After the stand jab, it was Chris Wong's turn to press a button, but I just don't even know what button it was. Or maybe it was too late because that standing medium punch shouldn't have clipped him as a frame track. True. Moving on to the next round here. Drive reversal on a sand blaster. Interesting. I guess he wants to space and store up as much as possible before he goes right back in. Drive rush in there. Wow, that was sneaky. That was so early. Well, these guys have actually been catching each other off guard a little bit with the really close drive rushes into mediums or lights. He tried to do it there, Uma. Charges up. I wonder if he tried to trick him into doing something. Not sure, but he gets a punish count throw anyway. We're going to see a Feng Shui engine soon. And he baits him with the salt. Yeah, he baits him with the salt. That's huge. And he's going to do the Feng Shui engine. And it looks like, all right, he's going to go for a different conversion here instead. Let's see what tricks he got. I know there's a stylist. What a throw tech. That could have been it. He's still in dangerous territories. No overhead, please. Nah, he's not going to do it. It won't kill either. Chris Wong, he's trying to perfect carry something to turn something around. But maybe if he can get in range of a throw and grab him, be sneaky, but he can. Forward throw. Man, the slow and daunting approach. Oh, no! no! And there was too far from that exchange and the pushback. Chris Wong thought he could get the punish off of a minus eight situation. I, it was too far. I have to give credit to some of these plays because they're doing. Dollars or will Chris Wong have the answer? Already aggressive, he dashed up at Umo's face with zero reaction, actually. And Chris Wong not finding the opening just yet. He's you know been what? facing off against a brick wall thus far. If that was him, I'd go bonkers this set. Oh, uh, Umo. I agree. He's got one game to play around with, but again, million dollars on the line. And he's right, again, he's been a little bit more aggro with his choices. That, so. is, that is a little bonkers, and we'll, we'll definitely accept that. Run right away, he gets the air reset. Good awareness. I love the presence of mind to jump in certain sequences. Oh, okay. Gets the uppercut here, cancels into the level one to catch the The is building, ladies and gentlemen. Uma is about a strike and a half away from taking the first round. Stop. And yes, sir, we are going to get that stuck. No, that was oh, a crush. Okay. It was a crush, I'm sorry. Crush. Excuse me. Oh, and it finally worked. He got the one time and he said, forget the top and medium punch. I'm going straight to the only dive kick. He knew what risks were applied. And he takes it there. And he is on cap cut 10 point. The crowd is cheering for him right now. Let's see if he has it. That's a counter hit. <gasps> sweep and not punish. Chris Wong, sweating. Sweating indeed, sweating buckets, but he gets the conversion into the flash knuckle. Chase him down for some Oki here. I wouldn't be surprised if we see an uppercut from Uma soon to even risk it. But hey, I think he knows what position he's in. Puts him down, jumps away, and then gets grabbed for his troubles. Wrong with a hefty amount of life to take certain risks, but yeah, again. speaking of risks, Uma was trying to bait out something, but guess what? Chris Wong was still within range to get the big damage conversion, he's, burning himself out. He's been doing the full assault after the drive rush on several different ranges, but I think Chris Wong's clocked onto ways doing it from up close. Far away is a little bit different. He's definitely identifying things as we go along. Whiff punish there with the forward hard punch. And it's so difficult to whiff punish that because of the startup and the spacing that he needs to Oh, take. okay. Splurged a bit too much meat and he will get punished for his troubles here, Uma. And it will be a level three. And this is what's very good in the game. If somebody doesn't make use of their two bars they spent, you punish it and take as much drive gauge away as possible. Let's see what the choice is from Uma. 
Perfect the carry. carry. Hey, Wait, look at the setup for the Feng Shui engine. The corner carry burn is going to be so significant, no, and so is the burnout. He's got no resources, so he's going to play with the stun. He's going to set him up for a stun scenario. Let's see what he does. This full conversion. This is the he's game. He's, I, he's it. done. I think he's done. That's it. It will be the stun. He's going to store up. He's going to finish the combo. And ladies and gentlemen, a million dollars is going to be awarded to Uma. Nobody had him on the cards to take the cup. He's represented with jury. He's represented Taiwan. And he will be your first million dollar champion for Street Fighter 6 here at Capcom Cup 10. Immaculate from start to finish. Making waves outside of the pools in the group stage. Making his name known amongst the crown. Ladies and gentlemen, your Capcom Cup 10 champion, Uma, one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a long time coming. From the beginning, Street Fighter has been building up to this moment. And now we have our Capcom Cup 10 champion, Uma!